guys, welcome back to Release the Crafting. Priscilla here with another installment of the third annual now, three years in a row, can you guys believe that? Uh, hop into spring video. So really exciting, for those of you who may not know, I will link a past playlist for the last two years down below. Every year my friends and I get together and we do a video hop for spring. And this is our third one. So I'm really excited. Uh, this year I thought I would do something a little bit different and uh, not do a paper craft. Um, and I don't know, like this is this is fun. And it's one of my favorite things to do. And I think at this time, it's, it's definitely um, necessary to continue traditions, but also to establish new traditions or uh, shape your traditions. Um, in ways that accommodate the changing times. Uh, that being said, I have um, invited um, a couple other people outside of my normal circle of friends to join along with us. And uh, you will see their videos on this hop as you hop along. And uh, let's just jump into it. What are we doing here today on Not Paper Craft Hop Into Spring video? Well, I think today I'm gonna show you guys how to use up some scraps and uh, make some little springtime pals. And I think this will be like a really cute idea. Um, one, to use your stash, but also um, maybe just like to give out as gifts to kids or people you know with like anxiety maybe who would really enjoy having a cute little buddy. Um, just to kind of like help them get through all the stress of this time. I know I could definitely use a little buddy, so that's what we're going to make today. Um, and it's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this was inspired by a post that Janine at uh, Lipstick Legion Craft made, and uh, I will probably link her channel below because uh, she's on the hop, so you guys will see her anyways. But she posted a thing on her Instagram that kind of inspired uh, this tutorial to begin with. So, uh, what you'll need. I have a regular piece of, like, copy paper here, and some fuzzy trim. I have some felt, and I have some brightly colored little bits of fabric that I have uh, left from other projects that are not quite big enough to make a book. So, um, I have those saved up. I have random fabric, too. I have buttons. I have uh, fabric glue because this is a mostly no-sew. I'm calling it no-sew. There's a little sewing involved, but it's not a necessity um, project. But this is also a hot glue gun. That's what this is. Um, you might need those uh, because uh, I don't really know exactly 100% what I need because, as you can see, I haven't actually made it yet. So let's see the making process. To get started, we're going to draw a really simple shape. And I know those of you who maybe aren't... Uh, feeling particularly artistically inclined might be like, oh no, I gotta draw something. But honestly, it's, it's really gonna be crazy easy to do. And let's see if this marker has ink in it because I've never used it and I don't know how long I've had it. So the idea is I wanna make something about this size because I have this size fabric. <laughs> but I also don't want it to be like gigantic either. So I just kind of want to get an idea, well, looks like there's some ink in it, of the field I'm working with. Oh, and I should probably fold it in half since I will need two pieces. And that will give me an idea of how tall it needs to be. There we go. So I'm just going to draw like a rough shape. Like shape, guys. Nothing crazy. Boom. <laughs> And what I want to do here is sort of get an idea or a suggestion of a little face. <laughs> and that's it. That is the entire pattern we're going to need. I'm going to overline this part here because I want these to actually be a little bit chunkier. Yeah, so uh, my guesstimation on this marker was correct. It is dying, but it has served its purpose here in making my wibbly wobbly little creature, which is clearly rabbit inspired. So what I'm going to do is fold this over. Just like that, and then cut it out. 
try not to speed up too much of this video because I want you guys to see how long this takes. Because it doesn't take hardly any time unless you let go of the paper and then it does weird stuff. I'm going to know that you guys, it's actually pretty dark outside because it's about to rain. Uh, here I am in Texas and we have been getting a ton of rain. So it hasn't really been feeling super spring-like outside of like the April showers bit. And then um, because my paper shifted, I'm just going to match those up. Although it doesn't really have to be super perfect because it doesn't have to be. So this is going to be my overall outline shape and this gonna be my face stencil. So there, those are the pieces we need. And I'm just going to cut little bunny shapes out of my fabric. And then I'll be right back because I actually have to go find my uh, fabric -y scissors because I'm not gonna do it with these. So actually I'm gonna pause, sorry, but I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back with better suited scissors. And all I've done is fold this together uh, with the right sides together. Not that that really matters too much, but it is my preferred method. And I can't find my pins, so I'm going to use a needle to secure our little pattern here to the fabric. And then just cut around it. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap, not a super big gap, um, but it is going to uh, help make my little shape closer to this size, but also add some delightful wonkiness because I want these guys to be like just little whimsical happy dudes. And I also just realized that watching me cut this might be the most boring thing on the planet, but said I wanted it to be a tutorial where you could see what was happening real time. And now you guys get to see that I have absolutely no skills with a pair of scissors. Sorry to ruin the mystery. How do I cut this? With the scissors. Ooh, that was some thunder. So I guess we'll call this segment of the video uh, the portion for people who are into ASMR. There you go, weirdos. That was just for you. All right. So, pull this out. Don't lose that. Put this to the side. So what I want to do next is cut my little felt piece out. Didn't lose it. No, it's fine. Everything's fine. And this one I want to cut a little bit closer. I don't need to leave as much of a uh, gap because it's not going to be doing any weird like inside out gymnastics. It's going on as is. So I want to have a better cut. So that's going to go here, ish, and make a little face. And what I want to do before I put that down is attach a button. And this is where the uh, 
sewing part of the no sew comes into play. And I guess it's, it's a matter of finding the right button, right? Because the wrong button will make this guy look weird. I feel like that's a little strange. Or maybe that one. Well, maybe the little white button. Because it only has two holes, so it'll be faster to sew. So, take our needle. A little bit of embroidery for us. I don't know if I said you needed that, but you do. I'm gonna do like this fun pink color. Because I have the most of this. But also because I want to keep it bright and happy for spring. And I'm not like concerned about it matching. If you're super into that, like you could do that. But these guys are supposed to look like stash critters, I guess. And they don't necessarily have to be bunnies. You could do like a chick shape or a I don't know, springtime animal shape. I don't know how you would do a lamb. I do know that you guys are watching me struggle try to throw this needle. And it's not working. Not that way. There we go. So, ugh. I'm just going to sew the button to the felt. I'm not going to worry about sewing it to the fabric. Because then we'll be here all day. Watching me struggle. Because, man, like, needle craft? Not really my thing. <laughs> so I don't uh, use a sewing machine or anything like that. Because I just legit do not enjoy needles <laughs> and needle craft. Um, I'm going to keep this real simple. Um, if you've never sewn a button before, it's pretty straightforward. Like, thread through holes a couple of times for strength and security. And then on this last one, I'm going to come up like normal. But instead of going all the way through the felt, I'm going to go just through the button after I drop my needle. Just doing a gravity check. And then I'm going to wrap it around underneath a couple of times. And that's going to uh, not only lock this button into place and not like have it all wobbling around, but also give it a little bit of height so it stands up from that. And then I'm going to go back through the felt. And then I'm going to go back through the felt. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and then I'm just going to uh, make a knot and tie it off. Doesn't cut with the scissors. <gasps> and I'm not even too worried about making it a double knot because I'm actually going to glue this little piece down. Now, that being said, a little one I did, kind of cute. I think what I also want to do is make like a little X, like he got his little eye torn out because those are the kind of toys that I like to play with. Doesn't everyone like little weird bunnies with missing eyes? You could do two eyes if you're not a weirdo like me. Or if you are a weirdo, welcome to the club. One-eyed bunnies it is. We're just going to sew a little tiny X. If I wanted to be like really fancy, I could do like the whole little like nose, mouth, whatever. Um, I don't though. I really don't. And I finally remembered how to tie a knot with a piece of string. So this one is less of a struggle. And with the proper scissors. Alright. So that's our little bunny dude. Probably could have made that a little bit bigger, but that's fine. He's got a tiny head. So, I'm going to take the hot glue. Which sounds awful. Because my glue gun is really old and I need to buy a new one. And then I'm going to force the glue out. 
and I'm just going to glue it down in the middle. Boom, like that. And then because I hate myself and I want to be unhappy, I'm going to stitch around this sort of haphazardly. And I'm going to regret not choosing to have a longer piece of thread, but it is what it is. Uh, if you did not want to do this step, you could just glue the whole piece completely. But like I said, I want to be unhappy. So through the fabric, right on the edge. Just going to make a couple of stitches. That's probably too deep that's going to ruin the scene around I'm going to kind of like Frankenstein this little bunny guy and I think uh, this part I'm going to pause and then come back and record it and do editing stuff that makes it go faster Well, it took me probably three minutes and I had nothing witty to say so we sped that section up you're welcome and that is uh, almost all we are going to do as far as needle and thread are concerned and as you can see I'm really happy with how this came out it's looking like this fantastical little whimsy Frankenstein rabbit monster and I'm about that life 100% um, so the last thing I want to do before we uh, patch this up is take some of this like fuzzy trim and attach it to the back side, which I'm just realizing has giant puncture holes in, so we're going to smooth those out a little bit, as a little tiny tail. And I might not even need needle and thread now that I'm staring at my hot glue gun with some more conviction. So you know what? We'll actually do that afterwards. If you want to have it be like super, super secure, um, sew it in. If you don't, let's do this. I think it'll be fine with hot glue. And that's kind of uh, the message of why we're here. So the idea is to take both right sides and glue them together now. And I'm going to use a uh, Fabri-Tac for that. Hot glue will also continue to work. Um, but my hot glue and I aren't the best of uh, friends. So we're just going to do this and I think this will work very nicely. It requires a modicum of precision and I think I'll have a little bit more control over the situation. So I want to get right up to this edge and just put down a really thin line of Fabri-Tac. And hopefully I finish filming this before the rainstorm comes. We're supposed to get this huge like thunderstorm. And it would be uh, really inconvenient if it happened in the middle of me, like filming. So of course I waited till all the sunlight was gone to start recording because I was like, oh no, the rain that I knew about for days in advance.
I don't know. I know uh, the last couple of years that we've done this, everything has been like really cheerful and happy, spring centered. But for some reason, this year especially, I have been feeling like really into the whole creepy spring vibe. And um, I'm not going to shamelessly plug my shop, but if you have been checking out my shop, you'll know that it's got a new kit in there <laughs> that sort of goes along with this. I'm going to smoosh that. Oh, stupid. You gotta leave a hole. <laughs> Don't be me. Leave a hole. <laughs> but yeah, so I've been into like a, this creepy spring sort of thing lately. And I think this little like dude, although like a bright, cheerful, happy color, it sort of fits that vibe that I've been feeling. And maybe that's just because it doesn't feel like a proper spring or because everything is, like, madness right now. And it's not, like, connecting the way that it used to. So, yeah. Or anyways, this little guy definitely going to help me get through any of those strange feelings. About to be my new best friend. So I'm gonna go around, make sure those edges are secure. Uh, because it is a no sew method. If one of your edges are not secure, don't fret, just put more glue on it. Let's make sure those are locked down nice and tight. And then I'm just gonna reverse it. Which, you know. Reasoning says, wait till your glue is dry completely. And that's what you should do. Um, but I'm living on the edge today. <laughs> I already split it open. <laughs> Don't be like me. <laughs> so I'm going to use this chopstick, which I keep in my stash. Because everyone should have a chopstick in their craft stash. If you don't, like, what are you doing? It's an essential tool. What's like the weirdest tool you keep on your desk? I'm actually pretty curious about this. <laughs> Alright, sorry. Weird edit. I had to sneeze. So yeah, I'm looking at my little like pen holder here. And it has um, a spoon in it. <laughs> in addition to the chopstick. And that's weird. But I'm sure like other people have strange things in it as well. Or keep weird things that like are brilliant and I want to know. Alright. Yeah, there's another hole. This is why you should wait. Cause you have all these little holes. Because <laughs> you're impatient. So impatient. And then you stab through your stuff because it's not dry yet. So yeah, definitely wait for your little dude to dry. <laughs> Lessons. So what I'm going to do to fix this is just jam a little hot glue in there. And glue my finger to it. too much. Do you see what I mean about like my glue gun and I not being friends? Didn't want to come out at all. Now it just wants to like pour out. It's okay. It's okay. Clearly I'm not giving this one to anybody because I would have waited for the glue to dry. The other ones I will wait.
sorry, I have to keep like pulling it to my face so I can see what I'm doing. And if you're worried about like the little funky bits from glue, you can take your heat tool to that and it'll kind of like melt it into the fabric a little bit and it won't be so strange. All right, so um, the last thing that you will actually need that I didn't say in the beginning of this because I forgot was some polyfill or other things to stuff your little dude. That could be like extra cotton balls or it could be um, more scrap pieces of fabric. I have some sheets of polyfill for like bedding, but it will also work as uh, animal gut inside. Guts is so gross. <laughs> I meant guts though. <laughs> I'm not going to take that back. I'm just going to cut it up into smaller pieces though so that it acts more like polyfill. And wiggles when it's in there. And they're just really random pieces. Like don't cut. There we go. Now if you choose to make this little dude on your sewing machine, I won't hold it against you. I totally admire people who enjoy sewing. Um, I do not. Uh, you shouldn't have to worry about this so much, but if you make it with the glue in the no-sew method, try not to overstuff your guy because it will make your glue seams burst. And this is where the chopstick comes in handy, and then you stab the ear again <laughs> because you're not careful. <laughs> it's fine. This is like an, less of a tutorial and more of an exercise in what not to do. That's my hope, sincerely, that through my mistakes, you learn. <laughs> That's how most people learn, right? <laughs> By watching people fail. And then realize that they glued a big chunk of the ear together and not just the hole they were trying to glue. There we go. You pretty much want to stuff this until you are happy with the overall shape. You know, the overall fluffiness. It's just supposed to be like a little hand toy. So it doesn't need to be like super fat. God, I need to fix that. <laughs> I promise after this I will make um, some and wait for the glue to dry <laughs> so you guys can see what they're supposed to look like. But for uh, educational purposes, I think this will be adequate. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to give it a little bit more because I know it's going to look different once I close that end. And I don't want it to have like a big soggy bottom. Nobody likes soggy bottoms. Unless they're boys. Shout out if you get that reference. And then all we're going to do is sort of like roll this in and glue it shut. And I'm going to use my hot glue for that because it's instantaneous. It's hot. Hot glue is hot, guys. You can 
could also do like a, a little whip stitch or a chain stitch and close it up yourself if you um, don't want to just stick your fingers directly into the hot glue, which I also don't recommend. Alright, I actually kind of like that it's like bleh, at the bottom. <laughs> I promise I'll be more careful on the next ones. And we got a fluffy bunny. So I'm just going to roll up this fiber into an adequately fluffy tail. Make sure that the ends are facing downwards. Get mad at my glue gun. Get a nice dollop. Press to secure. So there. A little fluffy bunny tail. I'm going to fix this off camera. <laughs> and then I'm going to go do some properly so you guys can see how those come out and show you what they look like at the end. Okay, so we're back and I have made a couple more critters to go along with my little first creepy critter dude here. Um, and as you can see, they came out super cute, and I am really loving these guys, like, the little fluffy tails, so fun, oh, that one's going wonky, I'll fix that, but definitely, you can see, let your glue dry, don't let your glue dry, <laughs> otherwise, yeah, really happy with how these came out, and I think they're great, and I'm, like, excited to get to pass these ones along, not this one, this one's staying with me, we'll be tragic together, uh, to some people who I think could use a little friend during such an anxious, uh, springtime. And I think it's a cute little craft and definitely something you could do, uh, with the kids. Uh, maybe some slightly older kids. Uh, you know, ones that you trust not to eat the needle. Those kids. Um, but I think it would be a fun little, like, holiday, because it's Easter time, craft to do with them. Or just something you could do really quick. And uh, hand out as little gifts or tuck into little, like, baskets and stuff. So, yeah, that's going to be it for me, you guys. I just want to say I appreciate your faces. And thank you guys so much for joining me for the third annual uh, Hop Into Spring. And definitely check out the next video, which will be listed in the description box below. Uh, so you can see uh, what everybody else is hopping to. And that's it, guys. Thanks so much. Bye!